multitude. Daniel must have been praying in order for him to see a vision like that. So we're talking about unceasing prayer. You see, he was in captivity, but he was praying to the Lord all the time for God's guidance and direction. And that's what I was saying a while ago before we started this service. Regardless of what happens in the future, whether it be tomorrow or six weeks down the road or three months or a year, regardless of what happens, we as a church, and I'm talking about all believers in general, need to buckle down and get right and start praying without ceasing for this country. If this country gets a liberal president in there, you really need to start praying harder because that means the coming of the Lord is closer and closer. I believe that. I believe there's going to be a falling away and there's going to be a lot of people going about their business and not thinking about praying to the Lord for what's happening. But we need to. He said pray without ceasing. Paul said pray without ceasing also. Amen. And then the last, let's see, Native Humility, chapter 10, verse 17. He showed humility, chapter 10, verse 17. He said, For how can the servant of this my Lord talk with this my Lord? For as for me, straightway there remaineth no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. What was he saying? He was telling God, I'm completely at your mercy. I can't do anything within myself. I have to depend upon you. Isn't that where God wants all of us to get into that position? To depend upon him for everything. And the last thing is chapter 7, verse 9. The spiritual vision that he was given. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. And let's skip down to verse 12. Verse 9 says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was like the, the fiery flame and his wheels as burning. And then skip down to verse 12. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. And then if you look over on chapter 10, verses 5 and 6, this is talking about the spiritual vision. Chapter 10, verses 5 and 6. Well, actually, I already read that one. Okay, verse 5 and 6. We read that a while ago in the prayerfulness. Um, but that's where he was praying to the Lord for companionship, but also for guidance. Daniel, along with his companions, were taken captive in order to be trainees in the position of wise men. If you go back to Daniel chapter 1, verse 3 and 7. This talks about Daniel being a eunuch. Chapter 1 of Daniel, verse 3. It says, And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed of the, and the princes. And then chapter 1, verse 7 says this, Unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. And we're not going to go into those tonight. We'll go into them the next time or so. But Nebuchadnezzar changed all the Hebrew children's names from Hebrew into um, the Chaldean, the Chaldean name. But to become a eunuch was common for the young men who were going to serve in the king's courts. It was not anything unusual. But they were taken captive along with Daniel. And then as Isaiah 39, 7 um, talks about this, and it gives you the, the prophecy of Isaiah. That's pretty much what was happening in 2 Kings, the same kind of prophecy. It said, Then said Hezekiah to Isaiah, I'm sorry, verse 7, And of thy sons thou shalt issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, which is showing you that Daniel was from the lineage of Hezekiah. Um, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. And like I said a while ago, his, uh, Isaiah prophesied this to Hezekiah 115 years before it ever happened. But Daniel lived nearly his whole life as a prophet as in, for the Lord, and he was in exile, in captivity. 
But King Nebuchadnezzar from Babylon actually invaded Israel the first time in 605 when he took the young, strong people. And then again in 597 when he came back to Jerusalem again to Judah and took Ezekiel and a bunch of other people. And then he came back again in 586. And that was the third stage of captivity. But what I want us to do is we need to learn, and what we will learn from the book of Daniel, is that God can use anyone, anytime, to do his will. And we're going to learn and see when we study this that Daniel grew in the king's court, but he grew in the Lord. Amen. He learned how to depend upon God, and he grew stronger, and he was used as a counselor, as an advisor in the king's palaces. And so he was there the whole time he was able to, to uh, counsel with Nebuchadnezzar. And so he... Um, was used of God in a mighty way. A lot of people don't realize that, don't think they can be used that way, but Daniel died sometime between 538 and 534 B.C., so when you do the math, the figures, uh, from where he started and where he, where he, when he was born and when he died, he lived to be about in his mid to late 80s. And so that uh, tells me that God blessed him in a lot of ways, and he was able to write the book of Daniel to show us that. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Now, next Wednesday, we will not have a Bible study. We will pick up where we left off on uh, November the 18th. That's two weeks from tonight. So I would encourage the ones who are on YouTube and watching us by social media to be sure to tune in so that you can um, be involved in the study. And I'll mention once again, if you would like to have an outline ahead of time, I can email it to you. Just call the church office or get online and, and uh, let, the, uh, let us know online. Uh, the phone number is at the bottom of your screen. You can call that number or you can email us and let us know what you would like to do and we can send an email to you free of charge. Amen? All right. Let's all stand and we'll be dismissed for this evening. Lord, we just want to thank you tonight for your word and for your blessings to us. We thank you, Lord, for the guidance that you've given to us and we just pray now tonight that, that you would just help this word to, our, to speak to our heart Lord, what we need to learn is that, God, you can use anyone, anytime, no matter their age, no matter their status in life or what it would be. And we just ask tonight, Lord, that you would bless us with your presence and you would bless us with a, the with a desire to serve you and to live according to your will. We ask these things in the name of Jesus for your glory. Amen. 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 You are dismissed. <clears throat>